Imagine a technology that can make you better, a tool for the mind that you can use to change how you think or how you feel, a, a tool for the mind that can even heal. Now, now, coffee, that's a tool for the mind. We all use it in the morning to perk up, to think through a long meeting. Wine, that's a tool for the mind. We use it to change how we feel, to relax. All the apps that we crowd our phones with, those are tools for the mind that we hope will make us more productive or more amused. But I'm here to tell you about a real tool for the mind, a technology that you can use on your brain when and how you want to change how you think, to change how you feel, to be better. It sounds like science fiction, but this is science fact. I'm a professor of biomedical engineering at the City University of New York, and my lab designs and builds these devices. The technical name for it is transcranial direct current stimulation, or TDCS. But what it is is a cap with knobs in it that press down against your scalp. And inside that cap is also a 9-volt battery and a little computer that figures out how much electrical current to send to each one of those knobs. Now, it's a real small amount. Most people can barely feel it. But if you do it right, you can deliver the current to just one part of the brain in a way that either winds it up or winds it down. If you do this for 20 minutes, the effect can last for up to an hour. And if you do this every day, the effects can build up and last for months. Now, this technology is being tested in hundreds of clinical centers around the world to treat a range of brain disorders, but it's also being used by tens of thousands of people as a mental booster. For example, many people with depression have a small part of their brain that isn't active enough. For those people, this technology delivers the energy to just that part of the brain in a way that winds it up. And what is exciting isn't just the quality of life improvement that these people are experiencing, but that the side effect profile is so minimal, just a little bit of itching during stimulation. Now compare that to what we've learned to expect from drugs. So you can be sure the pharmaceutical industry has taken note. They're calling this electroceuticals. The Department of Defense is testing this technology as a tool to accelerate the training of soldiers. And they're doing this by winding up parts of the brain that are involved in attention and that are involved in vigilance. The technology is being used to help boost the mental component of sport. This is a huge competitive advantage. The US ski team, the Olympic ski team, is using this technology. Red Bull is testing this technology on some of its extreme athletes. They're calling this electro-doping. The technology is being used to help people who are suffering from addiction by boosting up a part of the brain that's involved in control. But in healthy individuals, they're winding down the same part of the brain to see if it can make you more creative. It's being tested to boost mathematical skills, reading comprehension, to help people suffering from epilepsy, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, post-traumatic stress disorder, chronic pain, migraine, even to help people after an injury or a stroke heal. Now you can ask, how can one thing be used for so many different things? Well, the answer is that these things reside in a specific part of the brain. And so what we need is a tool to access them. And it's coming. And so with it are a host of legal and ethical questions. Who should have access and who should not? Is it fair for students to use this to help cram for an exam? Is it right for parents to use it on a child with learning disabilities? Should it be used by day traders looking for an edge, surgeons trying to stay awake? Is it all right to use this for amusement, for entertainment, to be better at video games? Should we all be allowed to self-medicate with electroceuticals as we sit, see fit? Or should the government step in and regulate it just like they have with drugs? It is because this technology has so much potential that it is so important that we address these issues as a community, even as it's showing up 
at your doctor's office, and also maybe at your local coffee shop. A technology that has the potential to empower us, to enhance our minds, is a technology that will change the world. Thank you.